Well, today I'm going to do something I didn't really want to do on the Morris Minor because the engine had good compression. It seemed like it would probably run okay. I'm going to pull the uh, I'm going to pull the head off, and then obviously I'm going to have to replace the head gasket and all of that. The reason I'm pulling the head off is that the water bypass valve or adapter down here at the bottom. Um, it was pretty corroded and there was just no way to get it out of the uh, out of the head to replace it um, especially at this angle and uh, we tried easy out and everything else like that heat uh, had been in PV blaster for about a week wouldn't move and you can see it's kind of just shredded so that head's gonna have to come off and then we're gonna have to flip that upside down and uh, and then I, I machine that thing out of there so that's what's gonna happen so uh, didn't really want to do it. Doesn't take that much time, but uh, it's a pain, and uh, I will end up having to then put all uh, a new head gasket and uh, a new uh, exhaust manifold intake gaskets and all that other good stuff in there. Uh, but it'll give me a chance to have a look at uh, at what it looks like inside the engine. So I guess I guess that's okay. So when removing the head from the uh, the Morris Minor engine. Um, I'm probably going to try to do it by keeping the uh, the manifolds on it, so I can uh, use that to help uh, lift the head out and uh, and take those off later on. Um, I'm going to get the carburetor out of the way, of course, and there's an engine steadying rod here that you have to get out of the way. And way right down here, of course, uh, if you're going to uh, if you're going to keep the manifolds on the engine, you're going to have to undo the uh, where the manifold hits the exhaust pipe and hope that that moves away. Uh, freely so those are sort of the things that we're going to do here and uh, as a prelude to getting this uh, this head off the engine so the carburetor is held on by two bolts uh, two nuts on studs and there's also a little spring here that you have to disengage but once you get those things done you can pull the carburetor away be careful not to lose this spacer here Got a little spacer here uh, that keeps the uh, the carburetor drawn back a little bit from the uh, uh, from the manifold. And on this one, I've loosened it up. I just want to be able to once I get this head uh, nut off, I just want to get it out of the way so I can get the head up. So anyway, I'm going to pull the carburetor in just a second here. Okay, so here's the carburetor coming away. You can see that that gasket <laughs> it's pretty useless. And so, uh, so we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to uh, do something about that, obviously. Once the uh, once the carb is out of the way, it's really easy to get to the uh, the two uh, uh, nuts uh, and bolts that hold the exhaust flange in. The carburetor is nine sixteenths, so you're gonna need nine sixteenth spanner to do that, and then these are a half inch. And, uh, and fortunately with these, they are, they're quite loose. By the way, keep that little, uh, little, uh, angle iron there with the hole in it. That's the retainer for the, uh, throttle spring. And you, you're definitely going to need that. And don't forget to put it back on. Well, things came off pretty easily, uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the little holder that has the uh, holds the exhaust to the manifold one good thing is um these are uh, uh brass nuts and so they tend not to be seized on there they, they tend to come off pretty easily and you have the same thing on the exhaust manifold and intake manifold so that that uh that did pretty good for us and we got that off pretty easily now there's a specific order which you should remove and put back on the nuts uh, on the studs which hold the uh, the head to the block and uh, there's maybe a couple different versions of this but I use the one that comes right out of the uh, British Motor Cars manual for the for the car the official manual and it gives you uh, either a diagram some of the later versions have a diagram or a little photograph here that shows you the order the numbered order in which uh, you remove and uh, replace the cylinder head nuts. And there's nine of these things. And so you don't want to just go and, uh, and start taking them off randomly or take one off really quickly because you, you, you risk uh, basically deforming the head and then you got all kinds of problems. Uh, but if you take them off slowly, basically, uh, you know, half a turn on each one until they're slack and do it continually following that order 
it should come off without any distortion of the head. Okay, uh, as I've said, you gotta follow this uh, sequence and I've taped the little sequence of loosening and tightening the, uh, the nuts that hold the, uh, the head onto the uh, engine uh, right on the fender here so I can look at it and I taped it in the orientation of the engine uh, so I won't make any mistakes. And as I said, there's nine studs that hold the, uh, 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 the head onto the uh, block, but there's actually more nuts than that. There's four in the center of the rocker assembly here, and they help hold the rocker assembly in, but those studs are only threaded into the head. So they're, they're different than the ones that are holding the, uh, uh, holding the, uh, the head onto the block. And so we're going to have to take those four off as well. Uh, because we're going to have to remove the rocker assembly to get the push rods out of there uh, in order to pull the head up. But so we're going to do that a little bit later. And you can see on the diagram, they mark the ones that are the ones that are threaded only into the head and that help hold the rocker assembly in. They mark those on the, uh, on the, uh, the diagram that you would use to uh, get the sequence. They have the little arrows. So these, uh, these are torqued on 40 pounds or so. So you're going to probably need a little bit of a breaker bar to get them going. And, and there we go. And as I said, you only really want to go about, oh, you know, less than half a turn or so on the first go around as you loosen each one of these up. And then keep it slow until they become completely loose. So I've got all the, uh, all the head nuts off and, um, these actually look pretty clear. They don't look like they're all rusted up. I had another stud that came out. We'll fix that. And so what I do is uh, I've still got to take that rocker assembly off, but I'm just going to throw a little bit of PB Blaster in these things. And it soaks in there, gets down there, and helps loosen things up. But they all look they look, uh, they look pretty good. I don't see them, you know, any, any signs of them rusted on there. But we'll see when we try to pull the head up. Okay, so once... You've got uh, everything uh, loose, hand loose. Then you could go ahead and just you know, speed these things up and get them off of there. So the uh, the main head nuts, the ones that are the studs going to the block, are nine sixteenths. And these little guys here, that are the last ones that are holding the rocker assembly on here, they're half inch. And so uh, I loosen them up, and I'm just going to pull them out, and uh, then we'll try to get the rocker assembly off of here. And then we have to be very very careful what we do. Uh, with the push rods. Now here's something that sometimes happens. The uh, the whole stud came out in this case and uh, this is uh, it's not that big of a deal we can easily reset this so you just want to set that aside and, and again it's not that surprising that this happens from time to time no big deal. Once uh, everything's undone then the uh, the rocker assembly just comes up really easily off of here. So you want to take that off and put it away someplace safe. So the, the push rods just, they just come right out like that. But you want to keep them in order. There's eight of them, you want to keep them in order. So the time-tested way of doing that is to have a cardboard that you've written on and maybe both sides can get a bunch of oil on it and uh, put them in starting from the front to the back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and have everything uh, clearly marked out and a tight little fit there so that you can put them in and you'll know how they go back in when you put the head back on. So really easy. They just come right out and then we're just going to put them in here uh, in order. Okay, and here we go. Everything neatly stowed away in a little box that we can close up. And, uh, and keep everything together and, uh, and clean and uh, organized. Well, I was, uh, I was very lucky. I was able to just, uh, once everything was loose, basically just lift the head right off of the block. And uh, there it is right there, resting on the, uh, on the manifold with all the various bits and pieces. So not a bad job, but I just one I didn't really want to do. You can see that it's got a nice copper uh, head gasket in there. Um, I'll be getting into how much carbon is built up on the rings and all that sort of stuff, looking at the 
valves and everything in the head, but pretty satisfying thing is off. And uh, now I'm ready to kind of tackle the problem, which was not anything to do with compression or the engine, but was that uh, that pesky little bypass adapter uh, that's pressed into or that's screwed into the bottom of the head. So then we have to tackle that. But anyway, there it is, uh, taking the head off a of Morris Minor. And it would be the same if you were working on an early Sprite or MG Midget, anything like that. So what you can see here is that the uh, intake and exhaust are really a sort of a one-piece thing that just comes off like that. And, uh, and there you have it. And uh, easier to do when the head's off the car, but you can do it when the head's on the car, of course. Not too, not, not too bad. But uh, there we go. Uh, and now, hopefully, we can get working on what the cause of all this was, which was that little bad boy right down there. <laughs>